Today, I've got three gorgeous rustic fall DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first is going to be a wood tag duo from Dollar Tree. So you're gonna start off with some of these, you can use a round bead or something round with a hole in it. And I'm gonna use some window clings, a little piece of this paper, and then two of these Crafter Square signs from Dollar Tree. And these came out this summer. So I'm gonna be using the back. I love the wood grain on both of these. I chose these two signs because of the grain. And I'm gonna start off by taking some of my antiquing wax. I'm gonna water it down, just put it in a little cup. I'm gonna add some water. You just see me squirting the little, I have a little spray bottle here. And I'm gonna use a chippy brush and just go back and forth all over this sign. Now, if you like a complete full coverage, you can do that. If you like it more streaky, you can do that. If you don't have any antiquing wax, you can use a brown paint that you water down to make your own stain, whichever way that you choose to do this. And if you just have stain that you want to use, you could certainly just use a can of stain, but be sure that it is in a well ventilated area when you put it down. So now I'm just going to make sure that this is completely dry. I'm just using my Arteza dryer here, my little heat gun, just to make sure everything's dry. I'm going to set it aside and we're going to work on the next tag. So this is just some, um, this came out of one of those crafting paper tablets and I just flipped through and I found this beautiful cream and orange. I thought this would be really pretty for fall. I've just traced it and cut it out to fit on the tag and because it's going to be a little bit short I've taken a scrap of here and I'm going to try to match the patterns up like that and it looks pretty good there's a little space but you won't be able to see when the project is finished so keeping it lined up I'm going to flip it over trace out the little hole where the tag um, hanger is going to be and then I can move the, the um, wood tag off and just cut out around the little spot that I traced. If you don't want to do this part, you could skip it and you just punch a hole in it later um, with a stick or something if you wanted to. And I'm going to do the same thing with the top, just kind of holding it in place, flip it over, and then I'm going to trim that little piece out as well. So I'm choosing to use a matte Mod Podge here, but you can use school glue, you can use uh, double stick paper, you can use a glue stick if you wanted to. Now would be the time to get those glue sticks at Dollar Tree because Jot usually has um, extras in their school supply section. So just be sure instead of looking in the crafter section, you look over there in the specials for the school supplies and you can get a bigger pack and save a little money. Okay, so once I've got full coverage on here, I'm not going too crazy with the amount of Mod Podge that I put on it. I'm going to just press it down with my hands first, kind of centering it where it belongs. Press it down with my hands, and then I'm going to take my roller, and this is a Mod Podge roller, and just roll it out to make sure everything is nice and flat, and that every piece of that paper sticks to the backing. Next, I'm going to cover these. Now, these are actually little cedar dials that you put on the top of your hangers in your closet to keep the bugs out of your closet, right? Keep moths out. I found these at the thrift store and I thought, you know, these would be perfect size for the top of these tags. So that's what I'm going to do here. I, I picked out two of them, but I'm only going to need one. All right, while that's drying, I'm going to take my sanding block or you can use an emery board, fingernail file, a regular piece of sandpaper, whatever you choose, and I'm just going to shear off the edges by going down and away, down and away, and it will slowly start to peel off, and then you can just remove it just like that. You get a nice, clean finish, and it looks store-bought. You don't have any raggedy edges on there. Plus, this is going to look really nice when we do the next step. So you're going to go all the way around your board, around the corners, around the edges, just like this. Looks good. If you like that finish, you can leave it that way. If you want to make it a little more rustic, go ahead and grab that mix that you already had made there with another baby wipe and just hit those edges. Just go right over those white edges of the paper and this is going to give it kind of an aged look. Let it overlap a little bit onto your paper and it just will kind of blend in with the edges and give it a nice beautiful rustic look. 
you can feather it out a little bit. You can drag your finger across the, you know, any areas you want on that tag to add a little more richness. Whichever way you want to do it is going to be great here. I love to give y'all little tips just to bring your projects up from Dollar Tree to, oh my goodness, no way you got that from Dollar Tree. All right, now we're going to go over to the window clings here. I think these came from Dollar Tree, but if they didn't, they came from Dollar General. That may be a Dollar General tag you see there. So these were from last year. Um, they were donated to me. By the way, I have a P.O. box, so if you ever want to send me anything, you can do that through that P.O. box. We're going to leave the backing on the paper here and cut it out so that you can't see through it. This is going to be more like a sticker or an applique now. Go ahead and grab up any type of little applique or wording that you like to add to your second sign. I'm going to use this one. I decided to go ahead and put some Mod Podge on this and use a little bit more of the checked paper that I used on the big sign. So that's just going to kind of carry it over to the other sign and make it look a little more cohesive, I think. Fits perfectly on my scrap. I'm going to press it down and I'm going to just iron it out. I'm going to roll it right on out. Cut as close as you can with your scissors. And then you can go back over this with a fingernail file or with a, you know, your sand and sponge here, whatever you want to use. And you can use the same technique here that we used on the big tag sign to go around the edges, take that white down, and just make this look a little more rustic. Now, I thought I was going to leave it this way, so I went ahead and added a little dimension with this, and I'll show you how to do that. You're just going to take your um, finger and you're just going to push down and drag little lines, little curved lines, just like a pumpkin has curved lines. You can leave it like that if you want, but I thought, you know what? There's This came off of that same um, cling backing that this big pumpkin, the stack pumpkin came from, and it fits perfectly on those little appliques. So if you find this one, you can definitely do it just like this. If not, just leave it plaid. That's pretty too. I'm going to use some hot glue and fix this down. And the only section I have, um, I will address in a minute. I'll show you how to get the little stem down because it's too thin to use the hot glue. I'm going to go ahead, once this is thoroughly dry, glue it down. I'm going to position it where I think I want to have it. And then I'm going to just go ahead and make this look a little more old and rustic too, just so that everything blends in nicely together. I'm going to add some hot glue on it and then center it over the top of those holes. And look at that. Doesn't that look perfect? I love it. I love the colors and everything in this project. It's so pretty with that pop of blue in there. I'm usually so traditional, but I really love that navy blue in there. You might be seeing more projects with this for me. So I'm just going to use a little bit of glue here. This is just regular glue. And I'm going to stick my stem down. Hold it for just a minute to let it catch. And then once it's dry, I'm going to loop these, the little tag hanger, right back through. We still have an extra one that we didn't have to use. And this is how this project is going to look. Such a simple tag project, such a uh, really pretty, I think, door hanger, or you could put it on your wall, or wherever you wanted to put it. Just a really nice, rustic piece. The next project is going to be an embellished wood bird house. We're going to use a little wood house and a card. So just grab any card you see over in Dollar Tree in their card aisle. And then these furniture markers also came from Dollar Tree in a three pack. So I saw this card at Goodwill and I loved the color and the print. It's so cute with all the little birds and the fall leaves. And it fits perfectly onto this card. There'll be a little excess that's going to be removed, but that's okay. I'm just going to sit it on top kind of get my edges where they need to be and then I'm going to center it where I like it and off to the side is perfect so that made it really easy for me then you can just use your fingers to press down a bit on the angles or and then cut it out with scissors or you can flip it over on your cutting mat I'm just going to give you some options and trim it out with your blade and your cutting mat be super careful when you use a blade that you are not cutting towards your fingers 
because these things are sharp. I did get this from Dollar Tree. I think it was in a three pack, y'all, over in the automotive or tool section. But they see how the blade fits right under the little chimney there. All I had was one little piece that was still stuck and it just folded and popped straight off. All right, now, see how nice that is? It's almost centered right in the middle of that house. I love it. So here are the three markers and I'm gonna show you what each color looks like because they're all brown, obviously, but they all have a little bit different of an undertone. So I'll just show you here. You can freeze it and zoom in, decide which color you like best. I've chosen cherry. And then I'm just gonna start coloring it in. You can use your antiquing wax here if you want to, but for those of you who don't have the antiquing wax or a Walmart nearby, but you do have a Dollar Tree, you can stain things with these um, Dollar Tree furniture repair markers. That's what they're actually labeled as, I do believe. And I've used these on lots of projects. I even have fall projects that I use these markers on from last year and probably the year before. So, yes, you can use these markers to do your staining. So there's the roof, the sides, and the back. The front is clean because we don't need to waste our furniture marker on this, do we? We're not going to be looking at this part. We're just going to add some Mod Podge or school glue or whatever type of glue you want to use. I will say that once you put it down, though, you need to let it dry before you start sanding off your edges or you will have your project shifting around. So be sure that it is dry. Just walk away, work on another project until it is set in place. I'm just putting a thin layer here of the Mod Podge all over the front, and I'm gonna place the card down right on top. Then you can press it down with your hands, roll it out if you would like, but you see how it shifts around? You gotta be super careful. Once it's dry, go ahead and get whatever you wanna sand with. I love my sanding block. And start shearing off the edges. Y'all, I am almost at 15,000 subscribers. I got up this morning. I checked it. I have 13 more to go before August 1st to get to my goal of 15,000 subscribers. I'm so excited. Thank you for all of you who have subscribed. There is going to be a giveaway, so be sure that you have your notification bell clicked when you are subscribed so that you do not miss out anything. Be sure that you check in the community tab um, as often as possible because sometimes I do my giveaways through there and you don't want to miss out. Okay, so I went back over my lighter edges with the marker and then I'm going to use the same technique we used on the tags to go over the house to give it a more of a rustic look. More aged, more homey, whatever you want to call it. Distressed can be called many different things. I'm just gonna go over all of the little white edges. I'm gonna pull it a little more toward the front. You can see here how it kind of fades inward. I love that look, love it. And then you can also just take your finger and if your background is like a stark white and you don't care for that, just go ahead and take your finger and drag it all the way across lightly like this and it'll take that brightness out of the white. The last is the light up gourd. Y'all this thing, I love this. It's so cute. Ugh. So you're going to take one of these light bulb terrariums from Dollar Tree. I got mine early this summer, but they should still be there. Some pumpkin chalk paint. I'm going to use some of this. I believe this is petal blossom petal, petal blossom something spray paint. This is a little thrifted mushroom, but you can get little mushrooms at Dollar Tree. Some oak leaves from Dollar Tree. I'm not going to use the ribbon back there. And I'm going to use this rub on transfer sheet from the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to use a string of lights, but you'll see that later. Okay, so we're going to start by taking the lid off. Little tip for you when you are spray painting, use a bucket of rocks, a little dowel of whatever length you like, and then stick that on there. Now when you take it outside, you can get to all sides without touching it. All right, one good coat of paint. This is just gonna make that chalk paint stick better to that plastic surface. So once it is completely dry, we still don't have our little screw on top. We left that off. Here's the tag for you. I'm gonna start taking that chalk paint and I'm gonna start putting it down on, the pump on this pumpkin or, well, it's not a pumpkin. It's gonna be a gourd, but it's actually a light bulb at this point. 
I'm going to go side to side with my paint all the way around and up to the top just past the little area that screws on so we don't have any gaps where there's no coverage. I used two coats of paint to get the coverage that you will see here. Tried to use my little heat gun. I should have known better and I got a little dimple. You can see it underneath there. All right, I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to go all over here. Don't worry about the little dimple. Do not use heat on the plastic or it's going to curl under. I knew that before I did it, but I thought if I kept my distance and kept it on low, it would be okay. Don't do that. Use a fan or just be patient. Now I'm going to take this in the same method. I'm just going back and forth with the brush strokes. And then once it is dry, this is how it's going to look. And to me, that looks more like a gourd. It has a little bit of a satin finish, and I'm totally okay with that. See there? Don't worry about that. We're going to fix it. You know, I always fix my boo-boos because I want to show you how to fix it in case you have a boo-boo. So this is cork lights, but you can get whatever lights you have at Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to add these little ribbons to it. These are going to be like a leaf bottom, I guess you could say, or a mossy look. A mossy bottom, maybe. I'm going to just cut these in sections. I'm not going to cut them completely square. And I'm going to stack them two pieces of each color just like that and I'm going to make a little circle out of a cardboard scrap because this is going to be how we glue those pieces of ribbon down. You will burn the fire out of yourself if you put this, try to do this without using a base and I don't want that for you. I want you to be able to keep on happily crafting with no boo-boos. So you're just going to stack these on, protect your fingers and I'm just using my silicone tip finger to press it all down into the glue. Then you can just go around and trim it up if you want to. Kind of make it into a circle because it's going to sit into the bottom and then the sides are going to kind of fold up the bottom. It's hard to show you this because it's inside, but you'll, I think you'll get the idea. Kind of fold it and then let it just pop back out in there. You see how it goes up the sides just a little? That's the look I was going for. So now you can just go ahead and add a little bit of hot glue. You want to use this on your cool setting. And then go ahead and put in your base. Now that's all in the bottom, so we have something to work with. Easy enough, right? Easy enough. We're gonna let that dry, and then we need to address the dent in the opening here. Doesn't this look like a gourd to you? I think it looks just like a gourd. I'm gonna take some of this trim. Now you can get these trims at Dollar Tree. They have like three on a, um, in one package and you can get them where the florals and things are uh, in my store anyway they put them all over the place maybe on an end cap I'm just gonna seal the bottom by adding a little bit of glue I'm just showing you that it's on low, t low temp I don't want to melt this any further than it already has been and I'm just going to start using this my braided piece mine came from the thrift store but you use whatever you can find and you're just gonna follow your curve around the opening here easy enough. I'm trying to get it as close as I can, not necessarily overlapping it, although that might have been a better idea. Um, so you do what you feel like you need to do here. And then with my thumb on the inside and my fingers on the outside, I'm just kind of squeezing that down to the, we're going to call it our gourd. Is at this point, it's a gourd. Keep going around here, adding the glue and squeezing it into place. And then when you get back to the original spot, whether you have a dent or not, go ahead and trim that off so that it meets. I'm using my bullnose pliers. I've had people asking me what tool that is. I was told these are bullnose pliers. I think I linked some in my Amazon store, so check my Amazon link and um, you might be able to find some there. If not, I'll be glad to help you try to find some. Okay, so this is about seven and a half inches, just a scrap that I had left on the paper, and I'm just going to go with the fold here. It already looked like it had a dent there, so we're going to make a bow just like that. Simple, simple. No tying because this is regular. I mean, you know, you know you're going to be tying with the, the jute here, but no tying the ribbon on pawn itself. That's, I think, what I'm trying to get at because it's really thick, and it would be hard to get a knot in a bow this size. So we're just going to use our jute to do that, and it's practically the same color, so, you know, it blends in nicely. 
I'm going to put a couple of knots in here so that it doesn't slip loose. And then we can just trim it off. Then you can pull the tails down and you can push those little loops right into position whichever way you want them. You can flip these up or you can flip them down and you can turn this over whichever way you want to do it. You can seal your edges. So I'm going to take my sheet here, my transfer sheet, and I'm going to choose which one of these um, beautiful embellishments I like. And I'm going to start off with these. Then I don't know what kind of leaves these are here. Are these grapevine leaves? I'm not entirely sure. And they have little berries, so I'm just going to cut them off while they're still on the backing because I, they will stick to your fingers. So and then you're going to mess your print up. So be sure that you don't touch on there unnecessarily, on the colored parts. Keep your fingers on the clear part. I'm going to hold it in place with my finger, and because this is a round, weird shape here, I'm just going to cut some notches up to the colored parts of this transfer. Just going to cut notches. That way it can lay down smoothly while I press it into place. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of options. This is my Mod Podge little squeegee, I guess you could call it. You can use something like this to press it down. You can use a popsicle stick to press it down. And in a little while, I'll be using something kind of unpredictable. But you never know what you have on hand, right? So I want to help you out so there's no excuse for not crafting. Okay. So once I get all those edges pressed down, I can carefully move my finger and the film. And there you go. And in the lighter colored leaf, there's a little crack, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that. All right. So now I'm excited. I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm going to go on to my next one. And I like this one with the little pumpkins in it. And I'm going to put it on the side. So before you decide, go ahead and cut some little slits in it. And don't place it down until you are sure where you're going to put it. Because sometimes it will still stick on its own. These are really nice rub-ons, in my opinion. So this is a clothespin. You know, the type with a little round top and the little, oh, there is completely wood. But look, you can use it and it works great because it's got a small um, surface area on the end and it really works nice to press these down. And then when you get ready to press, if you gotta press hard, put your thumb on the inside and support that under surface. Then you can flip that clothespin around, whatever you wanna call it, and you can use the round part also. So see there? No excuses. Y'all got a craft? No excuses. So pretty. I love this particular um, sheet of rub-ons. All of the rub-ons from last year. Um, three of them. They're all gorgeous. They're really, really pretty. So you can just use whichever ones you like. So again, pressing it down. If you need to trim it or cut little pieces out of it so that it lays flat for you, go ahead and do that. And you can put your embellishments wherever you want on your gourd. I just like it kind of around the opening here. I think it's really pretty. Brings attention and, you know, everything to the front. And I like that. So now they are all stuck down there. Very pretty. We're going to work on some florals, a little floral piece here. I like the green on the flowers, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut some of those green leaves on and add them because there's some green in the other pieces of what we got going on in this gourd and I want to go ahead and let that stay there. Again, I live in southern Alabama, so we have green all year round. All year round. We do have some fall colors too, but you know, if we're going to be realistic, there are places in the world that still have green in the fall. So, do whatever feels right to you. I'm going to start making a little swag here. I'm just going to alternate really no particular color idea here. Um, I want it to match what's going on already with what we've already used, but no real pattern. I'm just kind of going back and forth, the bigger leaves on the bottom, the smaller ones on the top, so that you can see a representation of each color. And then on the back, I'm just going to add one more green leaf like toward the bottom. Once that glue has dried, you can take something to poke a hole right through it. You can use a hole punch, you can use whatever you have, but I'm just using one of these little wood carving tools from Dollar Tree. And then just make a hole and then I'm going to feed 
my flower right through it. Now I bent the stem just like this so that it doesn't stand straight out so that it points forward. And isn't that cute? I like that. So it fits right in the hole on the top. And you can still see the gold. If you want to look at the gold, that's great. If you don't, don't worry about it. It's going to be covered on the back anyway. So now we're going to put our little bow right here in the front, on the side where I made my boo-boo. Nice. All right, the best part. We're going to be working on the inside now. There's so much going on in this project, but you know, take what you want, leave what you don't. I'm going to unwind it and then I just wrapped it around my hand several times so that I had a bigger area here. But you can have yours pulled completely apart if you want. You're going to take some type of mounting tape. This did come from the Dollar Tree. If you have one of these little cork ones like I have, they're perfect because they fit right in the neck above, you know, the neck of the gourd. We're going to call it our gourd. They fit right up in here and you can hide them and you can still turn your lights on and off. Perfect. You can order those from Dollar Tree. I mean, uh, goodness, from Amazon, but you may be able to find something similar enough at Dollar Tree. I don't know. You'll have to check and see. You could always use a flameless tea light in here if you wanted. I'm going to add some of the same colored leaves that we used on the top up there and the bottom off to the side a bit. And this is going to be where we're going to nest down our mushroom. I hope you can get an idea. I hope I'm explaining it well enough because I know it's hard to see the darkness inside of that pumpkin. So then you want to place your mushroom toward the center back of the pumpkin. I actually sat mine down a little bit too close to the front, but that's okay. You know, I can still see it nicely and it looks like a little starry night in there. Isn't it cute? I'm going to turn off the lights in just a second to show you. My son is helping me, and he's got the lights off for me so you can see how it looks. I think it's really cute. So now we're going to seal in and make that, all of those little appliques that we put on, or these little pieces here that we put on, we want to make them blend in and look a little bit richer. And the Mod Podge that we use for the rest of this project is going to be perfect to do that. It does bring out the richness of these little um, rub-on transfers and it's going to help seal them in place so they almost look like they were hand painted. And I like that idea. And we're going to do that to each one. It's going to blend in and dry and look so nice. And then if you want to cover up the back and you don't want that showing, you just add a leaf right there. Now it's all covered up. Nice! All right, y'all, so here are our beautiful projects. I love this little house. It's so pretty. Here are our thankful tags, our grateful, blessed, and thankful tags. And I am thankful for you. I'm thankful for all of my subscribers and everybody who views my videos. Look how cute. I also made those risers. Y'all need to go watch my risers video. I'll have that linked for you if you're interested in making some of these of your own. I hope you can get a good idea of what I've been doing in these videos. I hope you see something that you like here, that you're inspired, that you can learn so that you will subscribe and follow me through this journey. It's wonderful having you here. It's wonderful having all the positivity in the comment section. You know, you talk to me, but feel free to talk to one another as well. I love these projects and I believe in you and I know that you can do something just like this. A very similar, take your own spin, make it your own. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon.